What is up guys? My name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database and in this video we're going to be continuing our look at Cine Designer for Physical Renderer, the default renderer inside of Cinema 4D and we're going to be looking specifically at this sky object which is very important and I feel like I should have made a video on this much sooner. So we have a very basic set here that is part of Set Designer. So if you have Set Designer I would definitely recommend getting this. It's a pretty decent house model but I'm going to be making much, much nicer ones in the future. Let's start by looking at what the sky object does by default. So right now there are no lights in this scene. And let's set up our render setting. So we're in physical again. All I'm going to do is go to progressive. And I'm going to turn on global illumination, which is required. QMC and light mapping. That seems fine. So uh, I'm looking through this camera here. And if you're doing scenes like this that are enclosed, I would definitely recommend keeping a view up here, which you go to Window, New View, put it up there. Very helpful. And then you can scoot this around here and then also be looking through it up there. Definitely the best workflow I've figured out so far. And so let's add a sky and figure out what this does and why I think it's so important to even make a video about it. So if we zoom out now, everything is blue. And the way that we can think about this, because I used to have to do this in Maya, if I hide that, is if you took a sphere like this, and you made the radius like massive like that, and you went inside of it, that's essentially what the sky object is. It's just like infinitely large, so you don't have to actually go through the trouble of making a sphere. Um, but that's kind of what it is. And on top of it just being a sphere, um, with global illumination, it will actually emit light in a very even way kind of like the sky would if you were outside and it was overcast. So I double click to make a new material and I'm double clicking again. I haven't done a materials video for a while so I'm going to do a new one for sure and then I'm going to do the redshift series but let's do a sky light. And what we can actually do is I think you can use just the color but I'm going to use the luminance instead. So I clicked luminance, I turned it on, turned off color and it's very bright white. And I'll just do that. And I'm going to drag this onto the actual sky itself like this. Or I can drag it up here. And that's basically how materials work if we haven't, if you haven't done any materials. So let's render from here. I'm going to render this BTS view here like this. And let's see what we get. Shift R. Let the thread ripper do some ripping. So really quickly, we see that we have a very soft, even light from all directions. From below, from the side, and from the top. It's like as soft as light gets. It doesn't get much softer than this. This is 4 pi star radians. If you watched my video on measuring um, measuring softness of light, it is a full dome. And it doesn't get much softer than this. So we're going to stop that render. And let's take a peek here. Uh, this one. How do I do this? <laughs> Use this render view. Uh, we're going to render the actual camera with no depth of field on, but just render the actual camera. And this gives you a more... Uh, upper gives you a pretty good view of what's happening. So it's just light basically coming in from the top because there's no roof right now. I turned it off. And it's also light coming through the windows. So this is a really nice way to get some ambient light on your scene. And it also renders extremely quickly. So this is actually, I would recommend starting your scene when you're just blocking and you're not worried about lighting so much. You just want to see what's going on or make a nice like render for a client. Like, you know, here's what the set looks like. Just make a sky object and put a white... Um, put a white material on it, and it will give you this nice soft top light. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to unhide the roof. So this always becomes trickier when you're dealing with roofed surface, roofed uh, houses, but let's do a render now uh, and see what this looks like with the roof back on and the, with the sky object uh, with a white light. So you can already tell it's darker, but... We essentially have um, ambient skylight or daylight or just soft light coming through this window. And you can sense that a little bit here that it's a little bit brighter on this side. And it's backlighting her and she has the reflection of it in the cheek here and on the arm because she's set up correctly with Fresnel reflections which we will cover uh, again hopefully this month. I just I just moved like a month ago and just get even, get, getting everything all set up again to start back up doing more content here. But this is a really great way, again, if you have an interior, to just get some ambient light through the window. So you're going to get reflections of the window, and you're going to get a little bit of ambient daylight. 
or just ambient light. I'm calling it daylight because, you know, we're like inside an interior. So what we can then do is we can change the color. For instance, we can now make this a little bit bluer. So something like here, like this, you can kind of see a preview out there. That's going to be very, very blue, and it's also going to emit blue light, which this may not be the way you want to do daylight, but uh, let's just see what it looks like just for the demo. So pretty cool. Really quickly with just one, um, one sky object with a material on it, we are emitting light from that dome back into the scene, and it's a really fast way to get ambient light through windows or to get just an overall exposure of, um, from above, from all directions. So I'm going to hit pause. And that's really the gist of it. And I'm going to show you one more thing here. Make this video kind of short for everyone. I'm going to hide the roof again. And one way that I use this for explaining shots, basically like from, oh, got a text message. Hold on. Okay, so let's grab a light like a, I don't know. Let's grab a sky panel S30. And let's grab a stand here. And we're going to put this whole thing into a rig that I'm going to call key light. Great. And um, as ugly as this scene is going to be, it should work as an example. Let's bring this here. And um, this is a very small set. I'm going to put it there for now. And let's turn it on and just use it as an edge light. OK. So let's turn it on. Boom. There we go. Took a second. And then we're going to pan it over like this. Seems like it might be a little bit bright, but sometimes it's hard to tell. So I'm actually going to hide the skylight for a second. Hide that. And uh, from here, let's get an idea of what our exposure looks like. I'm going to save and shift R. Let's get a peek at the exposure. Oh, the exposure looks fine. It's just the preview is a little bit off. So in a shot like this, where say this is exactly what we want, and we want to make a render of the behind the scenes like this, well, everything else is completely black. And while, while that might work for like the through the camera shot because it's nice and moody and it's, it's accurate and whatnot, it makes the behind the scenes shot kind of uh, difficult to read. So one little cheat that I do, I will stop this render, is that I will make a sky object like this and I'm going to change its material to be um, full white again. But then I'll make it like a dark color like this. Save again. Hit Shift R and I'll show you that it adds just a little bit of fill light into the shadows. Okay, that's a lot of bit of fill light, but although this isn't the same exposure as this shot, clearly it's much the shadows are much darker in the one above this. What this allows me to do is still communicate that there's a sky panel on and it's edge lighting her, but now we can see into the rooms around here. And it just it just kind of like lowers the dynamic range of the scene. It allows the people watching viewing this behind the scenes and yourself to be able to see what's going on. So you're not dealing with pure black. Uh, where there isn't light and I think that this is a, a good cheat even for like the through the camera render like through here um, Even though there's no roof in this scene, so maybe I'll adjust the shot So it's like we don't actually we don't actually see the roof here. So I'm gonna tilt down um, Even if we were to do it through the camera I think that cheating in this little bit of ambient light is actually okay. This might be a little bit too much So I'll just turn it down a tiny bit so what is this? So we're at 17. I think something like 8 is a pretty good cheat. It's just so that everything isn't pure black. Uh, it adds a little bit of um, natural ambient light into the scene. And again, because of the shape of it, it's pretty much shadowless. So I, I think this is an okay cheat if you want to light simply and add just a little bit of fill overall for the scene. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. That is the sky object. I definitely recommend you use it on almost every scene. Unless you have very, very controlled lighting needs, I think that it's nice to always have like a base ambient exposure. And there's no better way to do that than with the sky object with global illumination turned on. See, look how nice this looks now. Just a little bit of fill light. And you can also use it to come through the windows or just make rendering really fast and easy. It's a very fast way to do things. So uh, that is going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about it or about... Rendering in general, uh, I really, really want to be making more videos for this channel, so give the video a like if you want to see more Cine Designer tutorials. I'm going to anyway, uh, especially on Redshift and just, just more things, materials and 3D scanning and all this stuff that I've been experimenting on and learning myself. I'm going to start sharing that very soon on this channel and the main channel. So uh, until next time, you guys get out there and plan better, shoot better.